brief introduction to cloud data cloud native analyses using earth data and i'll be using a example of a project that i did during a hack week that was held by nasa my project objective was to do an analysis to study how coastal upwelling is uh, has been changing over time and it's predicted that climate change is will change coastal upwelling due to changes in especially coastal winds. On the right, you see a graphic of many of the world's upwelling zones, and these are areas where there are the major upwelling zones, and there are different types of upwelling zone. They're continuous and they're seasonal. I've got them different colors there, but you can see they're all over the world. For this talk, there's really only one thing you need to know about coastal upwelling, and that is that it brings cold water to the surface next to the coast. On the right, you see a sea surface temperature image where blue is cold water and red is warmer water. And you can see that during upwelling, the coastal water is colder than the offshore water. And one way that we can measure whether up upwelling is occurring is looking at the difference between the sea surface temperature at the red dots next to the coast versus offshore. This image here is from a Varanasi summer intern I had in 2021, Howard Beck, who worked on this automatic algorithm, sort of automating that for us. Okay, and this is another picture from Howard Beck's work. So the idea here is that we can create this metric of coastal upwelling if we have these dots here spread uh, 100 kilometers offshore and we compare the temperature there to a corresponding dot that is offshore by a certain distance and perpendicular to the uh, shore. So in this case, each of those round dots has a corresponding pair that is perpendicular to it and offshore in the crosses. What I did then, expanding on Howard's work, was creating a line coastal along the coast to that blue line there, and then a corresponding offshore line is the red line, and created pairs of points that are separated by 100 kilometers all along this coast. I wanted to apply Howard's algorithm to these points. So the workflow was actually really simple. Download daily SST datasets for half the globe on a small grid, and then subtract the nearshore SST temperature from the offshore SST temperature for each of these pairs of points. So really simple idea. However, these are very big data sets. To do this would be like 30 terabytes or so of data. And the whole process of like downloading the data and then subset working with that data to subset it, um, I couldn't like load one of these images all together um, into my my code, I have to break that down. It'd take a really long time. It'd be like at least 10 days just to process this. So doable, but takes a long time. However, um, during this hack week, NASA was showing us how to do cloud native analyses. And in this way, you work entirely in the cloud. And it's not just that you're working on a virtual machine, you are, but what's different is that you don't ever actually download the data. You do all your analyses with pointers to the data. So I have a pointer to those um, uh, SST temperatures along, along the coast. So I'm working just with these pointers. And then when I do the analysis and I say go, all I'm doing is accessing the data at those pointers. And the result of this is that it took five minutes to do an analysis that would take 10 plus days. And I only had to download those, um, the points. And it was, you know, I downloaded, you know, 12 megabytes of data. And uh, during the hack week, NASA set, set us up with a, a Jupyter hub to do this. So it was all set up for us. And the basic um, code looks like this. Um, very simple, set up our cloud workers. 
and then wrote some code to describe what analysis we wanted to do, how we wanted to transform the data, and then we do the compute. So much, much faster now. Here's an example of the data that came out of that. What you're seeing here is on the y-axis, this is years, and these are daily slices. And then on the x-axis is the distance along, along the coast. These, I numbered each point, and I've pointed out here the different upwelling zones. And in this case, it's a thresholding to uh, determine if coastal upwelling is happening. If, black, if it's black, coastal upwelling is happening. If it's um, neat, the light blue, then it's not happening. And so you can see here the, these highly seasonal um, upwelling zones. Kind of ignore this. This is, well, it is a, uh, a um, continuous, so it's kind of a, an interesting one. It's current driven. Here's the classic one that's uh, considered a, a, a continuous upwelling. This is the Humboldt current. And you can see in parts of it, it's a continuous upwelling zone. And then in other parts of the coast, it's a seasonal upwelling zone. This is a known feature of that one, and it's just really interesting to be able to see that. So the next step is that I then got all the data from 1981 to 2020, and what I'll be doing with these data is applying statistical techniques, uh, two-dimensional space and time, to understand how the seasonality is changing or the um, the length of the upwelling zone, so a length of it along the coast, how that is changing over time. Now, what I was showing you were the images where I have a threshold, so coastal upwelling is happening or is not happening, but actually the data are richer. It is the actual sea surface uh, differential, and so I'll also be able to look at the intensity of the upwelling as measured by how much colder the nearshore is than the offshore. And here's just an example of that data. What you can see here is um, the blue and green is where the uh, coast is colder. So that is upwelling is occurring. I've pointed out here Gulf of Mexico. It's a pretty um, clear example there. And then you also see, um, interestingly, situations where the coast is warmer than offshore, so that's happening up here. This is happening up in the Arctic. The uh, white is where one of the points is on land, so that's a, an NA. All right, um, that was a really brief uh, intro to something that you can do with these cloud-native platforms and really opens up um, your ability to work with very, very large remote sensing data sets.